Today we're going to start a new unit called absolute value functions. And the first thing we're going to talk about are the key features of these types of functions. So you may want to pause the video right now and copy down everything that I have on the screen. Okay, welcome back. So first off, we have our parent function here, f of x is equal to the absolute value of x. Remember that f of x represents y. We're in function notation here. Okay. So a little background in case you've forgotten what absolute value does. Absolute value represents the distance a number is from zero. So if you were looking on a number line, the absolute value of seven is equal to seven, since seven is seven units from zero. The absolute value of negative seven is also seven units from zero. Notice that our result in both cases are positive, because distance, uh, for the most part, is represented as a positive number. Okay, so let's go ahead and find out what the parent table is for this function. It's very important. So we're going to pick some numbers. And so anytime you are graphing a function, um, you want to pick some negative numbers. Zero, of course, and positive numbers. And then you plug those into the function x is known as an input value. So we input these into x and we find out what that answer is and that represents our output y. So the absolute value of negative 2. So inputting negative 2 in here, negative 2 is 2 units from 0. And inputting negative 1, 0 is 0 units from 0. 1 and 2. So this is our parent table. Now to get the graph from our table, we're going to go ahead and plot these points. So we go on the x to negative 2 and up positive 2. Negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2. Then we find ourselves at straight edge. And we see that our function looks like a V. Absolute value functions look like a V. And we put arrows on the ends. Okay? So let's talk about the key features of this function. So looking at this parent function, Let's start off with the domain and the range. So domain is left to right, so we're going from negative infinity on the left to positive infinity on the right. And I went ahead and used interval notation. Range. goes from lowest to highest, so our lowest point. Now remember, range is y, so our lowest y value is 0. And it goes up infinitely, so positive infinity. So this is a closed dot, and if you couldn't see a dot here, it would be solid. So we're going to use a bracket, and infinity never gets a bracket in interval notation. Okay, the next key feature we have here is axis of symmetry. A lot of this is very similar to quadratic, except instead of a parabola, we have a V. And it's symmetrical on both sides. So our axis of symmetry is going to be that line that goes directly through the middle. So that's going to be a dashed line going directly through the middle, okay? And the axis of symmetry in this case is going to be x equals, and it goes through 0, 
So that is our axis of symmetry, x equals 0. Okay, let's take a look at our x-intercepts. And I put parentheses around the S. In case you didn't know from English, that means there could be one or there could be more than one. So in this case, as we look at the x-axis right here, it only crosses or touches in one point, and that point is 0, 0. So our x-intercept in this case is 0, 0. Y-intercept. Okay, so we go on the y-axis to see where it crosses or touches the y-axis. And again, it's the same point in this case. It's 0, 0. Okay, next we have to determine if we have a minimum or a maximum. And what is that value? So like with the quadratic, we looked at the vertex, okay? Well, in this case, similar to a vertex, we look for this point here. And in this case, it's the lowest point. So that means that this has a minimum. And the value, remember, is the y value of that point. So the y value of this point is 0. Now notice I'm looking for a value. So it's just a number. Whereas intercepts are points, an axis of symmetry is a line, OK, in years, domain, and range. OK, I think that's going to be good for our video for tonight. Um, one quick thing I want you guys to know is absolute value. So if I had x minus 3 plus 5. If we were going to evaluate this, let's say we were going to evaluate this function at 2. You would plug 2 in for x. And to simplify this expression over here on the right, absolute value, let's write this down, is a type of grouping symbol. That's important to know because remember when we're simplifying um, or even when we're solving, we, we use uh, GEMDAS, grouping symbol first, then exponents, multiplying and dividing from left to right, adding and subtracting from left to right. So when we evaluate this, we have to do what's inside the grouping symbol first. So we would get the absolute value of negative 1. And then the absolute value of negative 1 is 1. And so f of 2 would be equal to 6. All right, now I'll stop there. I'll see you guys tomorrow in class.